things all on this Tuesday. It's Claudia Manchanda, radical herbalist with a really feeble voice, but I'm going to do a video on chickweed, Stellaria media. So this is chickweed growing all along the side of my road, so it's not one that I would use for medicine, because it could be polluted or got dog's pee on it or who knows what. But it's really nice kind of vibrant, lush, healthy plant with all the baby flowers on. So the flowers look like little stars, hence the name Stellaria. And they actually have five petals, but they're bilobed petals, making it look like it's got ten petals. The leaves grow in opposites like this, and they're small at the bottom of the stem, and as they go up the stem, they get bigger. Chickweed grows in like moist, damp areas, and some gardeners think of it as a, a pain because it's able to seed even when the temperatures are cold and it can colonize and compete for nitrogen and nutrients of the soil and it readily takes over an area. Stellaria is a plant of the moon and it has the signature of having white flowers. It grows by water and has affinity for water in the body. It's very moist and cooling. Um, it doesn't like hot and dry conditions. It's got a mild grassy flavor it's very, very pleasant to eat, like a salad. And it can be cooked um, instead of like spinach, or it can be eaten in the salad, which is really delicious. In herbal medicine, it's used for dry, itch, itchy skin conditions um, in humans and in animals. So it's used for mange, it's used for eczema, it's used for dry psoriasis. It's also used for insect bites, boils, to draw out splinters. It's often mixed with plantain um, for, skin, for inflammatory skin conditions, and it's used with pile ward for hemorrhoids. Traditionally, um, like a long time ago, before antibiotics, it was used for sexually transmitted infections such as gonorrhea and syphilis. It was also used when malaria was rife in Europe for cholera, for measles. It's also been used for thyrotoxicosis, which is overactive thyroid gland. But these days it's primarily used for skin conditions. It's also really good for moistening dry coughs and even for voices like you can hear mine right now, really dry, um, raspy throats. Chickweed loves a high potassium soil and it bioaccumulates nitrites, oxalates and calcium. It really dislikes an acid soil. It has higher amounts of um, vitamin C in the fresh plant, so it's been used as an anti-scurvy remedy in the past. Sorry about all the dogs in the background. It contains a chemical in it called emodin that's also present in, I think, aloe, in rhubarb, in buckthorn and in knotweed. And that's a ACE2 inhibitor, an anti-COVID. It contains quite a few hormonal chemicals, like dorcosterol. It contains quite a few isoflavonoids, like apigenin, genistein, isoquercetin, diacetin, formoletin, which are all used in um, anti-cancer and breast mixes. It's also got an androgenic property, so. Um, it's, a, it's often used to help with conditions exacerbated by hormone imbalance. The leaves are rich in vitamin A, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, as I've already said, vitamin C and vitamin E, and it also contains rutin and several chlorophylls. The roots contain anthrocyanidins, carbohydrates, proteins, glycosides, flavonoids, alkaloids, saponins, triterpenoids and steroids, and it also apparently bioaccumulates mercury.
Chinese medicine. The herb used is called Stellaria dicoma. Its taste is sweet and cold. And it's used to reduce heat from, um, a, from a body that's deficient in yin. It clears heat in infants. It's for people with recurrent fevers, like with malaria. The root is immunomodulating and inhibits type 1 hyperactivity immune responses. It's shown that it decreases alpha tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 4. And the chemicals in the root have cyclic dipeptides, which are vasodilatory. It's also known as a kidney tonic that balances fluids in the body. It's digestive. It promotes joint health in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, swollen joints. It's a mild laxative and a nice mild diuretic as well. The crude extracts of the plant have um, demonstrated anti-hepatitis B activity. And I was reading earlier that at least 350 million people live with chronic hepatitis B. There's a few plants that look a bit like um, chickweed. One of them is scarlet pimpernel, but it doesn't have hairs. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but what's interesting about um, chickweed is it has a row of hairs on one side, a bit like a, a mohawk haircut. It's only on one side of the stem. Another kind of look-alike plant is um, a euphorbia spurge, which has a really unpleasant toxic sap or latex, which can cause profuse vomiting or diarrhea, so you don't really want to get that mixed up. The herbalist Nicholas Culpepper called chickweed waterwort, and he described it as a, a plant under the moon and that the juice cleanses and heals old ulcers. He also said that, um, that it was best beaten into a conserve for internal use and it was good for internal bruising. Chickweed can be made into pills, powders, eaten fresh, made into decoctions, tinctures, and they know that the tinctures are particularly anti-diabetic. And there have been studies that um, chickweed also protects the body against diabetic um, associated cardiac issues. It can be made into poultices, plasters, conserves, lotions, balms, ointments. In homeopathy, chickweed is used for conditions that are aggravated in the morning, for conditions of stasis, for burning eyes with frontal headache, for rheumatoid pains, pains in the small of the back, clay-coloured stools, I'm not sure what that actually means, because clay comes in different colours, for hepatic torpor, for IBS, and to dissolve thick mucus. It contains loads of um, amino acids, including thymidine, tyrosine, histidine, GABA, threonine. Studies show that um, it affects fibroblasts in healing tissue. There's um, they're what they called old wives' tales, which I don't really like as a saying. Is that um, chickpea, chickweed is something that's called anti-obesity, which is another word I don't really like. The studies have been done on chickweed that show that it actually um, helps with glycemic swings and also with um, appetite and cravings. It's antifungal and interestingly it's also um, useful for, rel for relieving anxiety and I'm sure there's many mechanisms where it helps with anxiety. It's demulsion and soothing. It also makes a lovely cream for nash nappy rash. Apparently chaffinches like the seeds. It contains these chemicals called sterols, like beta cytosterol and dorcosterol, and they promote and um, program cell death in sort of dodgy cancerous cells. It's a pretty cool plant really, isn't it?